Welcome kids. We are back at it again with another video lesson here. You should have out the note sheet that says distance formula on top. I can show you that. Yes, just like this. This is what you're looking for in your binder is this sheet right here. So get there so we can be on the same page together. So good news. Um, today should be quite simple. After today's video lesson, you should be able to find the distance on a number line, AKA, can you count? I know you can, so that's a very easy check mark for us. And then the second thing you should be able to do after this lesson is apply the distance formula on the coordinate system. I'm gonna say there's gonna be about half of you that have seen this before and probably half of you that haven't. It just depends on what kind of middle school experience we had, okay? But don't worry. We will break it down. It's very simple. It's basically just calculator work, which we all love. So if you want to grab a calculator, that might be helpful. Well, let's just get started and see what's in store for us today, okay? So the distance formula. So let's just define distance. Let's give ourselves a formal definition here. So distance is just the length of a segment between its two endpoints. So remember if we had segment AB, the distance of this would be how long it is. Beautiful, right? The coordinates of the points can be used to find, I should say endpoints, end points, I'm missing the word end, um, can be used to find this length. So if this was on like an XY graph, right? let's say A was here and B was there, we would use their ordered pairs to find the distance of that. Cause it's not as easy as counting when it's on a coordinate plane, whereas if it was just on like a number line. We'll see exactly what I'm talking about on the next slide, okay? Shimmy this back down. Perfect. This part's easy peasy. You guys get a head start. It says use the number line to find each distance. So take a second, find the length of DE, AD, and BE. Ready? Go. Just remember you're finding the spaces between each letter. So like if you're kind of struggling, like what do I count? Just kind of pretend like you're a frog and you're, you're hopping. So like that'd be one, two, three, four. So the length of DE would be four. Same thing with AD, five. Then BE, eight. Are we good? How'd that go? I'm hoping it's okay. So finding the distance on a number line, super, super easy. You just count. You guys can count, right? Um, I hate saying this, like the Pythagorean theorem is something you should have seen before. It is something you should have seen at some point in one of your math classes, and it's okay if you haven't. So if this is totally new to you, it's just a formula. Later on in the year, we have like a formal lesson on the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, technically this is like a review, so that's why they throw it at us so early in the year before we actually go through it together. Um, but you can use the Pythagorean theorem sometimes to find the length of a segment if it's in a XY plane. So if you're kind of like, what is she talking about? What's the Pythagorean theorem? No worries. This is the notorious A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I feel like any adult you ask, what's something you remember from geometry. This is like the one thing that they can remember is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. They probably can't tell you what they use it for. They probably can't tell you what those letters mean, but I feel like everyone just kind of remembers this as an adult. So let's break it down. So we're, our goal right now is to find the length of gh. So do you guys see how we can't count like we did on the last examples, right? Because this isn't on a number line. Like where would one unit actually fall? Like would this be one or would it be more like right here? We really can't count. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us. So things to remember about the Pythagorean theorem, it has to be a right triangle and 
C equals our hypotenuse. That's kind of what you need to remember, okay? So if I look here, do I have a right triangle? <laughs> no, Miss Bundy, you have a line. So we can make, though, a right triangle, because look, look how easy this is. If I use a highlighter, how's that sound? Come down here from H all the way to G and come this way. Do you guys see how now I form this right triangle? And now we can kind of count, because look, how many spots is G from this corner here? Well, that's a two, right? One, two. Now, how high up is H from this point here? Well, let's count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. And now I can use this Pythagorean theorem to find the length of GH because GH would be my hypotenuse. So now let's look here. So here's our formula. Now A and B, just make up your two other sides of your triangle. So like I'm gonna plug in two for A. So I have two squared, and then my B would be this side here, so six squared. And we're looking for C, because I don't know how far that is, so we just have to figure it out. And now it's just, it's just calculator work or mental math. So what's two squared? Well, two times two gives us four. Six squared, six times six is 36. Four plus 36 gives us 40. And now, how do you undo something squared? If I just want one C instead of C squared, remember we take the square root. I don't know if you guys have used this or not on your calculator, but on a calculator like this, you're gonna hit second, and then you're gonna hit this button here, the X squared. So now I have my square root symbol, and then you're gonna hit 40 and then hit enter. So our answer is 6.3 equals C. Now if we look, does this look like it's about six? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. That looks like it could be about 6.3, so I think we are good to go there. So this is one option to help you find the distance on a coordinate plane is the Pythagorean theorem. But now let's see what the distance formula is. So the distance formula is this long formula here. It looks a lot worse than it is. It's very, very simple, but just make sure you write this down correctly because you would hate to write down the wrong formula and do all your problems wrong, right? So um, you need the two coordinates or the ordered pairs of your endpoints to plug into here. So you would take your x2 minus your x1 coordinate, and then you square those. And then you would add it to your y2 minus your y1 coordinate by squaring that. And then in the end, you take the big square root. I know I just said a bunch of mumbo jumbo to you because I think numbers speak louder than words in math. We always have to like talk about things before we do them. So once you get this down, it makes so much more sense once we plug in some numbers to see how it works. I'm gonna move on, but if you are still writing this down, hit pause, and then we'll move to the next examples together. Okay, so find the distance between C and D. So do you guys notice how we don't have like a picture of it like we did on this one here? So sometimes if they give you the picture, the Pythagorean theorem is the more efficient way to, to do things. But if you're just given two random ordered pairs and you don't have a picture, it's kind of hard to count how far over your sides are, right? So that's why this distance formula is kind of helpful. So what I like to do first until you get really good at it is let's label our ordered pairs. So let's make C our X1, Y1, because remember each ordered pair has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And then our D are X2, Y2. So please write this down because the common mistake here is for kids to put X1, X2, Y1, Y2. That's not right. Each ordered pair needs an X and a Y. You need both, okay? 
Did you get this down? Good deal. Okay, and now we just plug in. So I'm gonna put my equal sign, a big square root, and now we plug in for what we see. So what did I label as my x2? Well, my x2 is five, so I'm gonna plug in five minus, because that's just part of my formula. What's my x1? Negative four, so minus four squared. Now copy down what you see, plus parentheses. What's our y2? Well, our y2 is negative one minus our y1, negative six squared. So from here to here, all we did was plug in what we labeled, nothing else. And now we just simplify using algebra. So let's drop down our big square root. And now let's do a little simplifying, okay? So five minus negative four, well, we know that really means to add, right? So I get five plus four is nine squared plus negative one minus negative six. It's really like adding. So then I get five squared, okay? We're still simplifying. What's nine times nine? 81, good job. Five squared, five times five gives us 25. Easy peasy, now we just add together. 81 plus 25 is 106. 106 isn't a perfect square, so again, this is where you can take your calculator, so I'll review that again. You're gonna hit second and then the x squared button, because right above it you see the little square root, and then type in 106, and I get 10.29. Let's round to the nearest tenth, so we'll say approximately, that's what those little squiggles mean is approximately, 10.3. Or if you want to be fancy, you could say CD, so the length of CD equals 10.3. We did it. Okay, the next example, exact same thing. You're just finding the distance between E and D. So you take a second, pause the video, try this out on your own, and then I will slowly work through the problem so you can see how you did, what you did wrong, and so forth. Step one though, remember, label your X, Y, excuse me, your X1, Y1, X2, Y2. I'll do that real quick here with you. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, see how this goes. I'm gonna start. Again, we're just plugging in. So copy down your formula exactly how you see it, and then you plug in. So my X2, we labeled as eight. My X1, we labeled as negative five. Y2 negative four, y one is six. Now we simplify, so simplify what's in parentheses. Eight minus negative five is really 13. Negative four minus six would be really negative 10. 13 squared, so 13 times 13 is 169, plus negative 10 squared. You're never gonna get a, a negative number here, so if you get like negative 100, you did something wrong. So think you're taking negative 10 times negative 10, which really means it's gonna be a positive number, so negative times negative is positive, so this is really positive 100. Add these two together, we get 269, and again, use your calculator because 269 is not a perfect square. 269, 16.4, so approximately 16.4. So again, if we want to be fancy, you could say ED, so the length of segment ED is 16.4. Did you get it? I'll ask you in class if you got it because I have no idea, but let's hope you did. Okay, 
we have one problem left. A little application here. So it says, Luke is standing on his team's 20-yard line, five yards from the sideline, when he throws the football. Xavier catches it on the team's 40-yard line, 20 yards from the same sideline. How far did Luke throw the football? So you can probably see it a little bit better on your copy, but they give us these coordinates, right? And our job is to figure out what distance did the ball travel from Luke to Xavier? Well, folks, no, all, all we're doing is the distance formula. They just hit it in this word problem. So I'm going to write down the distance formula right here. So x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is all we're doing, the exact same thing we just did. I'm going to make Luke my x1, y1. So I'm going to label x1, y1. And I'll make Xavier my x2, y2. Now we plug and chug. Plug in the numbers and we're going to crunch it out. So let's label here. Our x2 is 60 minus our x1 is 20. Copy down the formula. Get to your y's. My y2 is 20 here. My y1 is 5. And now we just simplify all day long. 60 minus 20 we know is 40. 20 minus 5 is an easy number of 15. And now we crunch it out again. 40 times 40, 1,600. 15 times 15 is 225. Add these guys together for a total of 1,800, oops, 25, got a little excited. That's a two. That's what that's supposed to say, sorry guys and girls. And now we're gonna take out our calculators and figure out what is the square root of 1825. So 42.7 ish. So the ball traveled approximately 42.7 yards. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty long throw, but I guess I'm not super knowledgeable in football. Okay. That's all I have for you for this video lesson. I'm open to like closing music or a sign on. I don't know if I said, said that at the beginning of the video, but just to, I don't know. If we're doing this the whole time, it'd be kind of fun to have something like that. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you next in class. Shoot me an email if something doesn't make sense or you are lost. See you later.